Let's talk about Ray Curdo, the rat that flew under the radar. We know that Ray died without any DeMeo family members knowing the truth about him, with the exception of Eugene Pontecorvo asking FBI agent San Severino if Ray Curdo was a cooperator when the agents told Eugene they'd just lost a major asset shortly after Ray's funeral. Point is, was Ray Curdo a cooperator? Suffice to say, while we don't know when exactly Ray became a rat, if we think back to each scene in which he appeared and look from a 30,000 foot level at his time on the show, we can get a little better idea of what his whole deal was in the first place. To Junior. We know he didn't give the FBI anything they could use to immediately indict Tony, otherwise they would have. Ironically, apparently old man DeMeo wanted Ray to be next in the line of succession, but Ray's not up for that because he has an 18-year-old with MS. The old man were here, instead of in that cell in Springfield, in St. Raymond. This is your moment. Go easy with the grease gun, okay? We never hear anything else about his kid or ever meet anyone in his family at home, so it's difficult to really speculate on any details there. Almost as ironic is Tony's accusation to Ray that you just don't want to wire up your ass. All due respect to your crippled kid, you just don't want to wire up your ass. You don't want the headache. It may not have been up Ray's ass, but he sure didn't have a problem wearing a wire from the way I saw it. What's happening? Tony Soprano's mother's wake is tonight. Want me to wear a wire? Why not? The first time that we know for sure Ray is wired up is in Prashai Lavushka. If I were an FBI agent listening into this wake, I would have gotten one hell of a comedy show. But not much other than that in terms of things that could be relevant for the FBI's investigation of Tony, perhaps other than knowledge of who's there. What was Ray's endgame? Was he just moonlighting as a consultant to the FBI? We gotta talk about my compensation overall. Interferon for my son's MS? That's 20 a year now. Right. You said you were gonna get us a making ceremony, which you didn't do. We know that he had the capability to be wired up at that point, because he offered to wear a wire the episode prior in Prashai Lavushka. Especially given the fact that there was a making ceremony that he could have gotten on tape back in Fortunate Son. Jeez. Ray, man, you're slipping. Slipping or purposely not doing shit. Here you are asking for a raise. Can't you talk to the higher ups? Was he planning on actually giving them good information that they could use to prosecute Tony? Like this Angelo Gia Cologne murder? First, wait, who is Angelo Gia Cologne? The last time that we see Ray alive is in Members Only, in the car with Agent San Severino. He hands her a tape and says, this is information I have about Tony talking about the Angelo Gia Cologne murder on tape. He said, he said, and then he stops talking, literally slouches over and dies. When he tells Agent San Severino that the sound quality is not good, but that he can back it up in court, I'm like, wow, this guy really is just living in another universe. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but to me it felt like he was acting very nonchalant about the idea of testifying against a mob boss, not with any hidden identity or anything, but just as himself. One conversation that we know is on tape is the one that takes place in For All Debts Public and Private, the season four premiere, where Tony complains to the guys that they're not earning shit and that what they're kicking up to him is a disgrace, and that his uncle Junior, the quote-unquote boss of the family, is on trial for his life and needs them to be kicking up more. While they may not have mentioned any names in this conversation, just that guy, he died on the vine. He petered out, died on the vine. They definitely admit the existence of this thing. We don't know how long Ray was cooperating with the government, but we can at least assume that it took place over the course of at least a few years. So when else could Ray have given them good information? I mean, he was a captain. He was certainly in the inner circle. So what's with the lack of help? At a certain point, would the FBI say, it's time to put up or shut up? If so, when? Would it have taken another five years? Would they have actually gotten something substantial? from Ray's testimony, 
and what he gave to Agent San Severina? Or was he just full of shit the whole time and more worried about his Alan Stewart shirt that Ralph Cifaretto spilled coffee on? Tony Soprano and Vito Spadafore talking about the bus station project. Adriana LaServa. The way we make it, she's either taken off or maybe even gotten clipped. You hear anything? Clipped? Why? Stepping out on her boyfriend. I heard she took off. Any idea where? How should I know? He's a dope addict. Did I already give you that? If you hear anything, let me know. Say hello to Ike and the guys. I mean, Ray doesn't know everything. He claims he has no idea where Adriana ran off to. And I do believe him there. Because I don't think that he was privy to any of those conversations between Tony, Sel, and Christopher regarding Adriana. But did he know anything else that he didn't give them? Is it true, Michael? <laughs> Our true enemy has yet to reveal himself. Oh, fuck me. These kids. Another question I ask myself is, did Ray play a role in putting old man DeMeo in prison? Two-faced fuck. To sell out your friends and save your own ass? It's despicable. That's one ride I would have loved to have been along on. So each one of you go out to your people on the street, crack some fucking... Break some fucking orders out there! So, what's he saying? The way I remember, he said, uh, that's why you got the top tier positions. This other inaudible is crack fucking heads, not legs. So we have the Angelo Gia Cologne murder info that Ray gives Agent San Severino just before he dies. But what about this Tony and Vito Spadafore talking about the bus station project? Was that something legit? We never heard anything else about it. What can we say about this guy? The ancient Romans had a word for it. Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Ray. Thanks for coming, Tom. I bought these, plus that's a good one. Or is Ma the heart of them treacherous? What the fuck is it? I can't catch a fucking break? This is Tony Soprano, talking about the Angelo Gia Cologne murder. He said... He, uh, Fucking captain doing his own radio broadcast. For Jesus Christ, another one now. No wonder the papers are called Mr. You and a Rat. Stand up guys like that. They're a dying breed. So overall, some final thoughts I have on Ray. Well, first off, again, I think it's kind of ludicrous that they had to resort to such desperate measures as going after Adriana to try to get information on Tony when they had this capo who was there the whole time. It was almost like they were pressuring Adriana more than Ray. That's all I gotta say. Frankly, I'm depressed and ashamed. Ray Curdo is such a great example of what The Sopranos really does a tremendous job of showing, which is that life is absurd. Things often don't make sense. There often aren't clear resolutions or endings. And sometimes, you may never know the full truth. Ray Curdo, the rat that got away. What do you think about him? Look, you know, in your ass,